All right, let's take a look at a current Haldex model of an air disc brake. So this one's been cut away. This housing has been cut away so we can see what's going on in the adjusting mechanism and in the actuation mechanism, the lever that actually pushes. And we can see that this is a single piston unit, but if we pull this brake pad away, we can actually see it's teed off. So it's got two flanges to spread out. So they got one piston acting as if it was two to try and make sure the application or the push on the backing plate of the pad, this backing, is meant to be aligned and be more even. So you can even see these little dimples right here line up to the stems that are on this piston. And so as the operator applies the brakes, the spring chamber, the air brake chamber, is actually going to be making the application. Where it does that is right here. So the brake chamber on this one, if I move this forward a little bit, would actually mount on this flange. And if we take a look at what's going on in that flange, we can actually see there's a small little cupped surface here. This is where the push rod is going to actually go in from our brake chamber. So our brake chamber is going to make air application against the diaphragm, push rod pushes here, and it's going to make the brake apply. So what does that look like when we look at the caliper? When we make a brake application, we can actually see the lever is pivoting. And as it pivots, it's got a set of bearings here that operate against our piston mechanism and moves this just a little bit forward. So we can see the movement is not a lot. And the reason why that works is that this air disc brake auto adjusts as the disc pads, disc brake pads, friction material wear down this adjuster is going to automatically compensate for that wear to maintain just a little bit of running clearance. Now, it's not just one side. If you look at this brake, you would think the only braking effort that's happening is coming from this side up, in this case, as we have this sitting on the bench here. You'd think, oh, the brake application comes from the brake chamber, it pushes on this lever, it pushes the brake pad in, so we must only need one pad. Well, you could try and do that with one pad, but the problem is it would unevenly wear the rotor and it would not get you as much braking power. And so we want more braking power than we can get from simply one pad, so we would use the second pad. But now the only way to get this braking force to actually be even from both sides of these pads is to ensure that the caliper slides on the carrier. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to lighten this up by pulling the brake pads out so we can see it a little bit better. And this gray part right here, this gray cast, that's actually the carrier that mounts onto the axle. The caliper itself is black. And the caliper actually floats on these pins right here. We have some gaskets on the inside, some rubber gaskets that we can see right there. And what I can do is I'll lift this up and we'll be able to see that the caliper slides back and forth on the carrier. The carrier has the rotor going through it. That's why there's this gap right here. The rotor's going to run through there. And so what's going to happen is as the braking force from our brake chamber makes contact to the lever, pushes the piston to make contact with the pad, pushes against the rotor, it also is pulling the caliper itself down. When it does that, it's the actual whole caliper frame that pulls this brake pad into contact with the rotor. So let's just see, we can slide the caliper on the carrier. So it's extended out and retracted all the way in. So we can see if the rotor was the space between these two gray tabs of our carrier, if you think the rotor is going to run in that space, clearly the pad that was supported by this caliper is able to, as we extend this out, make contact then with the rotor. So that's how we can get the braking action for both sides of the rotor from the brake pads. Now, that's also the reason that if you had a failure in one of these sliders, so if the gaskets or the rubber boots failed, the grease seals failed, and we've got contamination in the sliders, if for some reason these sliders don't move easily, as the brakes apply, they're going to pull the caliper against the rotor, but then if it can't easily release or slide back, this brake pad can actually remain 
in contact with the rotor while this one seems to relax. And what will happen then is one brake pad will wear quicker than the other. And a really common reason for that is that your slides have actually become dirty or failed. So this here, as we look at the actuation mechanism, this is actually what's happening. We're sliding this up, and as it slides up, it's detecting the clearance, and it actually has the ability of rotating this threaded rod. As it rotates that, I'm just going to do it with my fingers to show that that change happens. I'm just going to use this lock tab here a second just to help. But we can see that as we rotate this screw, the piston itself actually travels out. And so that's how our adjustment happens. It takes up the slack. It measures the slack, detects it, allows for a rotation to happen. That rotation takes up the clearance. That clearance maintains the distance between the brake pads and the rotor as it sits assembled. Again, this is going to be just as easy to service as the newer uh, Bendix model. Most of the manufacturers are using the same uh, system where they actually have a lock tab just like this that's going to slip over top. In this case, this piece that was cut away was actually holding that uh, pad retaining strap in place. But then ultimately, that's what's happening is we drop these brake pads in place and they can be serviced and replaced while the caliper is assembled onto the carrier. And so what that does is ensures that there is good, quick serviceability of these brake components, where it's simply a matter of pulling off the strap and sliding out the brake pads. When we take a look at adjusting this Haldex disc brake, a ratchet and an extension and a hex socket to fit in there, and that actually fits and connects to this gear right here, this adjusting gear, okay? And so when we retract, so let's say uh, we did a long service, so our brake pads have wore out, this, this piston has been adjusted because it self-adjusts, so it's been adjusted and it's all the way in because we had thin brake pads. Well, now we gotta put thick brake pads back in and what we need to do is reset this. We need to pull it back. Well, you're not gonna cut the housing away and try and get on with a screwdriver and reset it. And frankly, it wouldn't work if you tried. It just sort of springs back. What you're gonna use instead is the proper tool, which is this adjuster. And so what we're gonna do is just turn this. We're gonna back this adjuster off and we're gonna see that this screw is gonna turn back into this piston and it's actually gonna retract it. That's gonna increase the clearance here and give room for new brake pads to go in. So let's take a look. So it clicks back one, two, and we'll see we can completely retract this back. And that's what you would do for a service when you're replacing these brake pads is you turn it all the way back until it stops, okay? So it can't go any further back, and the reason why is we see that this piston actually made contact. It came all the way back, and it made contact with the self-adjusting gear back here. Okay, so now we put our brake pads in. That's good. We installed the top one. It's not gonna hold in place right now. It'd help already if I put it in the right way. But it's not gonna hold in place because again, we don't have this retaining strap. We sort of cut it away to make the cutaway, which is fine. But we do need to remember our anti-rattle springs and these springs are also going to put the retaining strap under tension and make sure it stays in place. So now we've done that, but now we have too much running clearance. So when we put the new pads in and we back this all the way off, we have too much running clearance. Well, we could go through the process of trying to ratchet this in, but the reality is this brake is meant to auto adjust. And I just wanna show you what that looks like when it auto adjusts. And it's only gonna happen when the brake chamber extends further than the cam inside here allows. And what I mean by that is, if we have the correct running clearance, all that's gonna happen is the brakes are gonna apply just like this. Okay, do you see that? It's moving, moving back and forth, but there's no rotation happening in the adjusting ring, okay? But now what happens if we have excess running clearance, so too much gap between the rotor and the brake pads? Well, what's gonna happen is the push rod is going to travel even further before the force is generated, 
And what we're gonna see is when we hit the end of the pushrod travel, we're going to see this adjusting ring turn. Okay, so let's take a look. And it's only gonna be at the very end of the stroke. It's going to turn just a little bit. This is why the service manual will tell you after you change your brake pads out, you can make, or you do any adjustment, you make about 10 to 15 brake applications. Well, that's because every time you make a full brake application at the end of its travel, the adjusting screw is gonna turn just a little bit. And every time it turns a little bit, now I'm gonna exaggerate and I am gonna use the cutaway and show it faster. But every time you make that full brake application, that adjusting screw turns just a little bit. Then it turns a little more, then a little more, then a little more, then a little more. And what we're going to see is that as it keeps doing that, it's going to extend this out and it's going to auto adjust to get it to the correct clearance. How does it know it's at the correct clearance? Well, you have to remember this adjusting ring doesn't turn until the cam is at the very end of its travel. So if the brake contacts, the pads contact the rotor before the cam can get to its end of its travel, it won't turn the ring. It's only when the brake linings wear, the clearance increases, the stroke travel increases, that at the end of the stroke travel, this adjusting ring turns. And this is how this is an auto adjusting mechanism to maintain the correct running clearance between the pads and the rotor.